fire will attract way more attention than any other cry for help. Jean-Michel Basquiat. I carry the wood of men I have never loved in my mouth. A strange man calls me a bitch. A cop calls me bitch. My father calls me bitch. My abuser calls me bitch. My girlfriend calls me bitch when I remind her of her ex-boyfriend. And all of these men lodge their wood in my jaw one way or another. Each bitch a full cord, a season's worth of kindling. The problem, I do not sweat. I spark my whole heart a wick. Each beat a strike, while each tooth a lit match. My tongue doused in butane, cautious not to swallow. See, this is not a metaphor. This is a recipe for fire. I gnash and outspews the poem, the inferno. I sneeze and a five alarm fire goes over the three family poetry slam. The stage, a brush fire, the crowd, a blaze. I Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the venue, and these men and their wood ain't nothing more but a field of ashes in this mouth. A charcoal pit, microphone, or extinguisher. All I know is it keeps me from torching myself and this wood. Once a burden becomes the reason I spit fire, a woman completed by flames and searing syllables, scorching my way to survival even when fire silences women like the sun do skin when you bask in it so quiet you ain't even know you was charring and I start to think of black as burning with radiance or with churches. So I am not opposed to burning things to the ground. I have learned it is the only way to send a concrete message to God. And I don't know what rises more, the souls of black bodies or smoke. And no one who is communed with God comes back to fill us in. You've seen the news, only the survivors are the storytellers. And each man's bitch is a combustible woman's reason to exhale and his wood, his downfall, crumbling. He asked me to be more water. Well, heaven is the ocean, and I have yet learned to swim, but I sure as hell know I can burn. Whoa. about Phil. He's been one of the most supportive people in bringing me out to his events and also attending my own wherever they may fall and I appreciate that more than anything because without people like Phil I would be talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> the word faggot shoots off my tongue more often than good morning. My brother does not think it offends me. He does not believe the barrel of his voice could hold the bullet that would call me cadaver. I ask if a stranger calls me a black dyke nigger bitch, I don't know where to insert comma or know which word does the least damage because that is the one I would change into compliment or think it a blessing. They left me alive enough to hear it. I must be lucky. Men offer to let me suck their dicks more often than they would a straight woman in honor. Some believe their wives too clean for. They want to Make me walk crooked, then fuck me straight. Be the daddy I ain't have, ain't need. Gonna show me what I've been missing. What I'm supposed to do when a stranger wish me dead? I can see my brother's heart beat in his throat. He puffs up his chest and says, I will rip out the tongue of any motherfucker that would. And I laugh and say, start with yours. <laughs> An open letter to Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> yes, honey. Oh, you done done it now, boo-boo. Got you late for the gods, Miss Thing. They don't want it. Oh. And the utmost amount of shade, spelling Caitlyn with a C and not a K. Only two things have been this fierce since the beginning of time. The way Moses' hair blew in the wind when he parted that Red Sea and Michelle Obama. By all means, date a black woman. Ain't done nothing but good for your family anyway. You a minority now when we have to stick together. Advice on transitioning to a woman. You lucked out on missing period cramps and menopause. Advice <laughs> on transitioning to a lesbian. Lose the nails, baby. Cause it's time to fight. 
Remember whose sacrifices you are riding on when dyke is the least offensive thing someone can call you that is when you know you've made it. You know what's funny? People will spend 21 years and a quarter of a million dollars on tuition and still not know what they want to be when they grow up but judge you for peeling back that invulnerable cis hetero flesh you were mistakenly born into Caitlyn. This is the first step into platforms more feminist than Ferragamo. Make sure your red bottoms ain't covered in your sister's blood cause ain't nothing gay about trans murders. Being born in the wrong body ain't nobody's business but your own. You spent 65 years in a closet full of clothes, full of bones that never felt like your own. This is your chance to save someone trapped in a body that feels like dirty laundry. So when Chris says she feels like Bruce died, tell her you finally pulled the pillow off of Caitlyn's face and you speak in chameleon, which is to say you have always been changing this time to save yourself. Save some tired digger the trouble of burying a body that no one ever wanted when everything in a trans woman's wake is body bag or casket. Caitlin, you better slay, bitch, dear Caitlin. You are the coming of age story some queens will die trying to tell. If all else fails, dick or no dick, at least make them gag, bitch. <laughs> Dave Loaf tweets, I'm not a dyke, hoes just love me. ASAP Rocky says, I kiss a dyke bitch and I liked it. I fuck a dyke bitch, if she liked dick, I'll be fucking broads like I'll be fucking bored. Turn a dyke bitch out, have a fucking boy. As Kanye West says, her to do anything for a Klondike. Well, I'll do anything for a Blondike. Nas says, it's only right that I use mics and the rhymes that I write are harder than dykes. The title of this poem is Homophobia versus Homophilia or how girls kissing girls became a fashionable thing. Lessons to the pretty boys with long hair and gold chains that rap about fucking lesbians. There are worse things than being homosexual, like not being homosexual. <laughs> like believing your dick hard enough to fuck a brick wall into stilettos in a mini skirt while maintaining your masculinity. Like how being gay is sexy and profitable so long as you're not. Or not understanding that your dick or any dick has nothing to do with my sex dyke. A noun. Definition. One. A long wall or embankment preventing flooding from the sea to a boundary of defense, meaning I am the levee, the ark, and you, sir, could not possibly handle all of this wetness, for God so loved this girl, he gave his only begotten tongue, so ASAP, get like me. Your girl probably wish that you could kiss like me, so train in the game of such delicacy, so no, you will never lick her clit like me. Question, when you fuck a dyke, which one of you is the daddy? <laughs> Rhetorical. I once had a man tell me he did not respect me as a woman until I opened my mouth. Funny how I become his kind of woman when I open my mouth. Ironic how an open mouth and bended knee become synonymous. I tell him it is not his penile compulsion that compels my tongue to beat. It is the body of a woman, the love of a woman, and that body is mine. It is not built for his male consumption or depletion or rhyme scheme. It is built for nature, to nurture, and for the record. We all start out sucking titties for survival. <laughs> Some of us are still surviving. <laughs> my parents have been married for 44 years. For my mother, forgiveness means forever. And my father's name is Chance. And he gets too many the first time he left. My mother swept every square inch of our apartment. I prayed it was for a new beginning, but I quickly learned she was collecting his dust, whatever remnants of him she could find the second time. There was no sweeping. But then she had learned that shadows do not shed skin the third time. I was 16. That year, the most honest poem I had ever written said fuck him 12 times, and that year, she let him back in. For my mother, an open door makes a happy home. Well, I cannot seem to find a suitable home in a woman's heart, but will rest up in her bedsheets. I guess my father and I have the same affinity for coming and going. 
We share the same gap to smile, only his is for fleeing and mine for trespassing. Maybe that is why my tongue is barbed wire. My parents have never seen me perform. I fear I am not poet enough to let my mother in. I fear I will remind her of lonely. I fear microphones will bring my father out of my bones. I fear my father. I fear I am just like my father. I fear I am nothing like my mother. I fear I am nothing. I do not have a proper balance of what to let go of and what to hold on to. For me, I forgive you means I forget you. And I have been trying to forgive my father for years, but only fuck you crawls out my mouth. Wow. The seven sacraments of coming to peace with my molester. One, the baptism. Praise the water. You will wish to drown. Think it a holier death than slit wrist. Soak his fingerprints off of your panty line. It does not cleanse the dirty inside, but it makes the mask presentable to the Eucharist. My body is Christ, unable to rise, broken and devoured. Three, the penance. I swallow the pride to wash down the guilt. I swallow the vodka to wash down the pills. Even swallowing reminds me of you for the confirmation. I was molested. I tell this to someone. I was not murdered. I tell this to myself. The Bible says when they lay hands on you, you receive the spirit. I listen to the spirit, not the Bible. It is not audible, just a soft whisper learning to spit truth from a mouth fucked shut. Five, the marriage. I gather my pieces, commit to being whole again. Psalms chapter 46, verse 5. If God is within her, she shall not be moved. Six, the holy order. A vow to singe the sins of his demons. His transgressions are not mine, that this man's soul may ascend when the day of judgment comes, and so be it for all I proclaim my gospel, even if it took 16 years in a black book full of bodies I fucked, just trying to lose between each limb, trying to learn to love my own seven. The anointing of the sick, a ritual of healing, lasting forgiveness for the forgiven, for the forgiver, for safety, for sins, for his children that will unknowingly grow up in the shadows of a predator. And for his wife, I will worship his hands for what they have built and never know what they have ruined. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>